Now, adrenal gland, if you think about it, most adrenal lesions we see are going to be adenomas, okay? And adenomas, at least 5% of the population have ad incidental adrenal lesions. Probably it's closer to 8 to 10% as you get to older patients. There were several articles written. This article by Song made the point, if you have an adrenal lesion under 3 centimeters or 4 centimeters, and there was no history of cancer, and the lesion was low density, you could stop and say it's an adenoma, occasionally myelolipoma, but it's a benign lesion. And there was an article by Corwin that made the point, if you had bilateral nodules and they measured under three to four centimeters and the attenuation on non-contrast was 10 or less, they're benign as well. So a lot of the incidental lesions do not need further workup. Now, what's a bit challenging is that the radiology advising and the endocrine society's advising has become a little bit different. Now, one of the challenges is when we talk about following incidental adrenal lesions is that where radiology says, hey, it's an incidental adenoma, leave it alone, the endocrine societies are saying, yes, it's an incidental lesion, and yes, it's an adenoma, but how do we not how do we know it's not a secretory tumor that we're not picking up an incidental functioning adrenal lesion? That becomes more of a problem because if you think about it, you need to get a lot of lab values. Who's going to follow the patient? We don't have that many endocrinologists. Now, I do know that this rule, I think the European Society of Endocrinology recently maybe two weeks ago, is changing their guidelines to basically be more in agreement with radiology, that the patient has no known function or no hyperfunction, an incidental adrenal lesion under four centimeters, water density or under 10 Hounsfield units can be left alone. But again, it's somewhat challenging. And here's just a summary from a recent radiology article, again, making the point that they can be safely ignored okay, when they're small. Now, when I think about adrenal lesions, and again, incidental findings in the ER setting, I think about size, I think about attenuation, calcification, enhancement patterns, because I don't want to recommend an adrenal protocol study for every single patient. Now, certain rules do exist. If you have a non-contrast scan and a lesion under four centimeters, well-defined, measures 10 Hounsfield units or less, it's an adenoma. You can stop there. And so here's a case, incidental finding. This was a patient for hematuria. This measures zero Hounsfield units, okay? No problem, you would do nothing. But one of the things to remember is adenomas, even benign adenomas can enhance. So as you go from zero, once the patient was given contrast, because this was a hematuria protocol, if you go back and measure the adrenal, it's 64. Now, if you only would have the arterial phase, you would say 64. I have no idea what that lesion is. It could be a lipid poor adenoma. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's a met. Maybe it's, it's too low for Theo but you could not call it an adenoma at 64. Now we have learned that we look at washout values. If you have a contrast study and you see an adrenal lesion, get a washout study at 15 minutes. And if it washes out more than 60%, then it's gonna be a benign adenoma. It's also important to follow the rules. Here was an incidental ER finding on a hematuria patient of an adrenal nodule. To me, this looks benign, but if you measure it, it measures 50. 50, you need to worry about because it's over 10. So you need to do a washout study. Patients brought back, look how that nodule, which is a little more than a centimeter, enhances. You see it there. It enhances to 164. Anything enhancing above 120 almost invariably is going to be a pheochromocytoma. And this was a pheochromocytoma. Now, one thing that can be tricky is when you're looking at nodules and patients are young, you say, well, it's probably nothing. But here's just a good example of why it's important to follow the rules. This was a patient who was 22 years old, had this adrenal nodule, which measured 36 Hounsfield units. It's two centimeters, 
patient was brought back. You can see an enhanced to 100 Hounsfield units and washed out to 50. But the patient also had some symptoms. The patient was worked up. The patient was cushionoid. This ended up being a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Now, if patients really young, we don't pick up, we do pick up adrenal cortical carcinomas with a 10 centimeters incidentally at times, but not when they're two centimeters or less. Again, it's very important looking at the washout value, but also looking at the patient. If the patient has a history of something suggesting hyperfunction, then the patient needs to be worked up regardless of the patient's washout value. It's interesting in this case, if you were strict only on the Hounsfield units, you would have called it an adenoma, but because of the patient's symptoms, you had to work the patient up more, and at the end, it was removed. Now, it was felt to be a functioning adenoma. Everybody, including the surgeon and the pathologist, was very surprised when it ended up being a carcinoma, but those things do happen, so a very unusual case. On the flip side, we also think about the larger lesions. Incidental findings are going to be malignant, but the fact is in four centimeters or greater adrenal lesions, it's only about one third are going to be malignant. So there's a range of tumors. You can see benign adenomas that are seven centimeters. You can see myelolipomas that are large, adrenal cysts and obviously a range of tumors from pheochromocytomas on down. But not every tumor just based on size is going to be malignant. Now, I mentioned about adrenal. The most of what we find are adenomas, but here's a patient. This was a patient with abdominal pain and an unsuspected left adrenal lesion, 10 centimeters, very vascular. You can see the neovascularity here on the MIP imaging. No surprise, this was a primary ACC, which invaded the renal vein and extended into the patient's IVC. Well, here was a patient with abdominal pain and, and a history of ulcerative colitis, and the CT scan was done to look for a flare of the patient's ulcerative colitis. And at the end, you see this large left adrenal mass, which is enhancing. There's nodes present. This was resected and was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. So incidental findings, yes, most of them are going to be unimportant in the adrenal, but not all of them. I mentioned before about pheochromocytomas that 70% of pheos are going to be picked up incidentally. Again, following the rules, this was an incidental adrenal lesion, three and a half centimeters on the left. Patient was brought back for a washout study. Maybe the patient has a, a lipid poor adenoma. Measures 42 non contrast. You give IV contrast, it measures 150. It's hypervascular, very classic for a pheochromocytoma, which was eventually resected. Once the patient was worked up, the patient was hypertensive, but the patient had no history of hypertension based on medical records. The patient had not been complaining of anything but there was a pheochromocytoma. So again, incidental findings can be important.